What's happening? Tony is out. I got no other updates. JR, you can have the first question if you want, because you got that Raiders hat on. I love it. He doesn't even have his hand up, I don't think. He don't need his hand up. He got a Raider hat on. Well, you just called him out. So, JR, now you have to ask the question. Coach, Bob, back up to my light on here, man. Hey, man, tonight, man, great night tonight. We will see a little bit more of BG tonight and our man, my Miss Mr. Mays here after last night's performance that he gave you guys in the second half of it last night. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes without saying. I'd, I'd be an idiot, and some of you guys probably think I am, but you, you after a performance like that with Skyler, it's only obvious he, he's going to play. Um, you know, it's also very obvious to, for me to think uh, – that he's going to give us 20 points in 16 minutes. Uh, so that's not the key. The, the, the point is he deserves it. He's earned it. Um, we talked about effort and the physicality of the game and the importance of that for us at this stage. And he provide, he needs to provide that. And so I'm looking forward to having a guy that I know is going to come in and do that. He earned it. And, uh, you know, that's how you get your group back together as you reward that type of effort. Well, Coach, I trust in you, Coach. You're a smart guy to me, brother. I got you back always, LP. <laughs> My daughter thinks I'm smart. That's all that matters. Forgive me for intruding. Next question from... That's what happens when you get Raiders fan together. It just We just go crazy. <laughs> you guys uh -huh. haven't been to the black hole. You have no idea. You should see me on Raider game day. Actually, some of you guys shouldn't see me on Raider game day. Okay, uh, we'll go to Chris Kirshner with a question. You want me to answer in the bodies, Chris? How are you getting uh, Indiana to, to feel you tonight? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what are the challenges of evaluating someone like Onyeka in this kind of season where there's limited practice and obviously you don't have summer league or, or training camp or anything like that? You know, I, I, I honestly, um, you know, we've had – you know, obviously the two two way guys, uh, Onyeka, Cam, Kevin Herter, and you know there's a consistency, and I think that's the beauty. If anything, I'm 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 crediting summer league and what the NBA has done for providing summer league. It's the greatest opportunity to to evaluate your guys and what you see when when guys don't play. You know, we saw Cam and how he started last year, and Kevin and how he started his first year. And just the adjustment to the physicality, the speed, the timing, um, the conditioning, those things are, are you can't, I don't care how good a player is, you, you, can't, you can't really prepare for that until you get into the mix of it. And summer league is so fast and you can play with 10 fouls and guys are competing for jobs. So there's, there's even more intensity and pressure on the basketball. Um, it's a great opportunity for a young player to get adjusted to the NBA game. And when you miss it, you can feel it. And so, oh, who's coming off an injury, who didn't have a summer league and is playing in limited time and limited opportunity, his work ethic has to be great. It's got to be consistent. It's the only opportunity he's going to have to adjust to this game because the minutes just aren't going to be there, although we're, we've thrown them out there. We're not throwing them out there to be a rotational player right now. We're throwing them out there uh, mainly because we, we need a body, and it does give us an opportunity to, to get his feet wet some. And so the evaluation is just how hard he plays, the effort he's playing with. I'm not worried too much about the mistakes. We want him to limit those. Um, but he's, he's getting a feel for, for what it's like, and he's going to have a greater idea every time he has to come in and work out. Bob Rathbun. Hey, Lloyd, the Pacers are second in the league in points in the paint, yet they are 28th in free throw attempts. That, to me, doesn't seem to jive. Do you notice anything unusual there as you look at the Pacers? Yeah, we, we, call, um, we call Sabonis. He's, he's got that golden right shoulder, and so he creates a lot of separation on his um, – when they play pick and roll, he creates separation. Guys aren't fouling him because he's getting them off of them. Uh, and so a great finisher around the basket. You know, Brogdon does a great job of getting into the paint and finishing around the basket. They, they do good job. Uh, they do a good job coming off of pin downs and getting downhill. McDermott is not a guy you think of getting into the paint and scoring. But when you're chasing uh, an unbelievable shooter coming off of pin downs, you're, you're on, the, on the high side a lot of times. And he's able to get some, some uh, baskets at the rim 
you know, if that big is, is not fully committed to the switch at the rim or if, uh, you know, you got pressure with, with Turner and Sabonis rolling and you're worried about that. So, you know, it, it it's it's one of those things where you don't need to have a high flyer and you don't have to have the most physical guys. It's just the pace and the movement in the type of shooting that they have that makes you have to chase on the perimeter, which allows them to get into the paint. And that's what they do, whether it's Holiday who's shooting 42 percent, Lamb who's shooting 53 percent. Uh, McDermott of all the guys is shooting the least at 35%. Uh, you're chasing those guys and they're getting into the paint and they're making some easy opportunities because of that chase. And they've got some great drop offs because of their bigs and their finishing ability. And Agnew. Hey, Lloyd, I was wondering if you could take us through in the summer when Nate was available, what intrigued you about him and where, where you and your um, players have benefited the most from Nate being on your staff? Um, it really wasn't the summer's last minute ordeal. Obviously, he's still coaching all the way into September, October. Um, you know, we I have talked to Travis um, for over a year about, you know, adding to the set. When I got the job, I had a, another position that I could have filled and decided not to. And so just you're always thinking of ways to improve and, and figuring out how you can improve and, and adding adding some quality. You know, we're, when I got the job, the focal point was going to be on player development. And coming into year three, it was going to be on execution and, and preparing for the playoffs. And so adding to the staff, adding a credible source, someone like Nate popping up and being available, we have the same agency, so there's a connection. Um, and, and, you know, through the, the, the years, he's been great in reaching out to me and, and, uh, and having conversations with me about uh, how impressed he's been with our team in this stage. And so... You know, I looked at a lot of guys, but none with a, with a resume as great as his. And, and the opportunity to uh, to get him here uh, presented itself through the agency and through through myself. And uh, we had some conversations, and that's how it happened. But he's uh, he's a sounding voice. He's got a tremendous amount of experience in this seat, and uh, he's helped out that way. Kelly Kroll. Hey, coach. Sorry, I didn't wear my Raiders hat tonight. I um I'll next. I don't time. trust that answer either. You either. <laughs> but I did wear my black and silver for you, so there you go. Um, real quick, we talked a lot about the defense last night and the energy. Um, offensively though tonight, I know completely different opponent. But what is there something you'd like to see maybe tonight? These guys get into from a rhythm standpoint a little bit earlier on that side of the ball. And, yeah, and how? it's the same. You know, ball movement reversals, touches. Um, you know, some of the cliche words we use for our offense, they all create energy. Uh, we, we, we try and attack the paint every game. We try and play in, in, in transition before the defense can get set every game. These guys are going to throw a little bit of everything at us defensively. They're in boxing one tray, I'm sure. TJ McConnell's going to come in. Aaron Holiday is going to come in. And they're going to pick up 94 feet. Uh, we'll see some zone on the side and baseline out of bounds. They're going to mix up a lot of their coverages. And so we just have to make them work. How, how do we get into the paint against those uh, different coverages is, is a focal point. How do we move their defense from side to side and create pace in the half court is a focal point. And how do we get more touches from everyone involved um, so we have the type of pace? You, you get more touches, you get more reversals, you see guys moving with, with the greater spirit. You know, Cam, in the last two games, has had a, uh, uh, we call it a Maggetti cut to get a dunk, just playing behind the defense on penetration uh, when his guy turns his head. You know, those type of things are, are simple plays, easy, easy activity, uh, but it requires work. And so we just need more of that for each guy. Each guy has a different area that they can grow. We're trying to get Kevin on that three-point shot. And so his ability to move without the basketball, you know, Trey can get downhill and find guys, and we've got to present and space the floor appropriately and getting Cam slashing and moving like he's done uh, more often. Uh, so he can get some easy baskets and kind of get his rhythm going. Jeremiah Johnson. Hey, Coach, I also had a question about Nate McMillan, and I guess I'll spin this one forward. You have a short turnaround. How much did you rely on Nate for your preparation for this game? Because so many of these players were on the Pacers last year, and and maybe the anything he had to say in the scouting. Nate's got game. all he's got all the secrets for us. So we're <laughs> we're you know some of the stuff. No, he's he's. You know, Nate's a pro. This isn't a, a personal game. He knows the tendencies. He presented the tendencies for us and what to be to be mindful of. 
uh, what what he thinks has has hurt his teams when he was coaching there with some of those guys that uh, we should implement in tonight's game. You know, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to execute it. And, and bottom line, it's still about us tonight. Um, you know, we have the secrets, we have the ideas, but it's it's ultimately about our spirit, our physicality, and being able to execute it the way we do it, uh, knowing those tendencies and know, knowing uh, who we're playing. Um, even though Nate has spent a lot of time with those guys, it's, it's still about us tonight. Thank you. Final question from Andy. Hey, Coach. Good to see you again. Uh, just wanted to ask you, uh, you already touched on it a little bit with uh, JR's question, but I wanted to ask you about specifically their second unit versus your second unit and anything that you notice that you can take from last game, obviously the fourth quarter, into this new game. Yeah, I mean, they're playing a shorter rotation. Uh, TJ McConnell, Aaron Holiday, Lamb, um, they'll play the big fella a little bit. And, you know, what they do is they split up um, – Turner and Sabonis when they do sub and, you know, you end up just having one big and they go a little bit smaller. Uh, but you're going to get pressure. You're going to get pressure from T. I coach TJ in Philly. He's going to pick you up 94 feet. Aaron Holiday is as tough as they come. Uh, he's going to pick you up and be into the basketball. And so we just have to handle their pressure and uh, we have to put pressure on them. Uh, TJ had 15 assists in 28 minutes a couple games ago. And so we've got to have some discipline. We've got to disrupt what he's able to do to get those guys empowered when he's on the floor. And they've got tremendous shooting all over. And so it, it's going to be, it's, I wouldn't really say first unit, second unit with these guys. They sub and they, they, they mix in and blend uh, some of their reserves with their starters. And they've got a good rotation in doing so. We, we just got to match and bring more of a physicality and effort standpoint um, on the defensive end and, and really commit to making them work when we have the basketball. Thank you, Lloyd.